My name is Dr. Patrick McGann, and I am a board-certified orthopedic surgeon that practices in San Francisco, California. This presentation will be on hip arthritis and hip replacement. First, we'll start with an introduction, then proceed to describe the typical causes of hip pain, conservative treatment options, followed by hip replacement. I will then discuss a real patient case. The hip is composed of a ball and socket joint. The ball is called the femoral head and the socket is called the acetabulum. This is an x-ray of a normal hip. The femoral head and neck form the ball. The socket is formed by the acetabulum. And as you can see, there is joint space left between the ball and socket for the cartilage. This is an x-ray of both a normal as well as an arthritic hip. The normal hip has adequate space for the cartilage, which is the protective covering and cushion of the joint. As you can see on the right side, there is joint space narrowing, indicating arthritis. Arthritis is a constellation of findings, including bone spurs, uh, joint space narrowing, and deformity. This is easily visualized on x-ray, and an MRI is not typically necessary. There are multiple causes of chronic hip pain. The most common cause is osteoarthritis, which is your standard wear and tear arthritis, which occurs over time. Rheumatoid arthritis is a less common form of arthritis caused by an autoimmune inflammatory arthritis. Post-traumatic post arthritis is caused by a prior injury, such as a prior labral tear or hip fracture. This is commonly seen in athletes following an injury. Another less common form of arthritis is caused by avascular necrosis. This is caused when there is a disruption in the blood supply to the hip, causing the hip bone to die. When the hip bone dies, it collapses and forms arthritis. Bursitis is an inflammatory uh, condition which can be treated non-operatively, which is similar to tendonitis. The initial uh, management of hip pain starts with an evaluation in the clinic. I will typically get x-rays of a patient. If it is appropriate, I will prescribe rest, anti-inflammatories, and an icing regimen. I will often prescribe physical therapy in order to strengthen the muscles around the hip. On physical examination, patients often have reduced range of motion, a painful gait, and crepitus and popping with movement. In the office, I will typically get x-rays of both hips. As you can see in this x-ray, on the left side, this patient has already had a hip replacement. On the right side, the hip has significant deformity, including joint space narrowing, collapse, and bone spur formation. Non-surgical management typically can consists of cortisone injections, physical therapy, and anti-inflammatories. I will often refer patients to physical therapy for a strengthening program. I will perform intraarticular cortisone or platelet-rich plasma injections in the office under x-ray guidance. However, this is best for patients with early or mild arthritis. Once the arthritis is, in, is advanced, conservative treatment options will not suffice. For moderate to advanced osteoarthritis of the hip, total hip replacement is the best option. Total hip replacement replaces both the ball and the socket of the joint. The indication for total hip arthroplasty is a painful hip, x-ray findings of arthritis in a patient that has failed conservative management. Once the pain negatively affects a patient's activities of daily living and daily life, then they are a good candidate for a hip replacement. Um, although total hip replacement is an effective a solution for hip pain, there are surgical risks. Overall, the risks are low but include infection, nerve injury, blood clot, periprosthetic fracture, infection, and loosening. Overall, the relative risk of surgery is low and is less than 5%. Total hip arthroplasty is a safe and effective procedure. The recovery is typically quick. Patients are typically in a hospital or outpatient surgery center for one to two days following surgery. Patients can walk the same day of surgery and usually use either crutches or a walker. After one to two weeks, the crutches and walker are discarded and a patient will often use a cane. 
At approximately two to four weeks, the cane is typically discarded and patients are back to walking normally. Full recovery typically takes three months. This is a real patient case from my practice. This is a 21-year-old male with bilateral hip arthritis caused by avascular necrosis. He first had surgery on the right hip. Ten days later, he was walking without any assistive devices. As you can see, on the first x-ray, he has had one hip replaced. You can still see the significant avascular necrosis, collapse, and arthritis in the contralateral hip. In the x-ray to the right, you can see that he has now had both hips replaced and has a successful outcome. He is now walking pain-free without any assisted devices. In summary, Tola hip arthroplasty is a safe and effective solution for chronic hip pain. This is performed with high-quality prosthetic implants to create a new, fully functioning prosthetic hip joint. Surgery is successful and overall has a low complication rate. Patients walk the same day of surgery and full recovery takes approximately 6 to 12 weeks.